morning. Um, today we are looking at virtual tours. Um, the uh, name of this talk is Going the Distance, the Value of Virtual Tours. The reason for this talk is that last year we saw a substantial growth um, in virtual events. Um, whilst not the same in person, there are some benefits to holding these events. Um, we thought it'd be nice to touch base with people that have done this very well, um, to share their experiences and why it would be worth looking at. Um, so just to introduce everybody, we'll let you introduce yourselves. If we start off with yourself, Tom. Yeah, so Tom Warner, uh, founder of Warner's Distillery. We've been going since 2012. It's all on my uh, family farm in Northamptonshire. And prior to lockdown, we were having you know around 140 people a week through on, on fixed sort of time tourist uh, um, uh, timings. And um, because of lockdown, we obviously had to change tack quite quickly. And we'll, we'll be talking more about what we've been doing. I'll hand over to Charlotte. Hi, I'm Charlotte. I am the brand activations manager for Warners. Um, that sort of covers quite a large entity of stuff within Warners, but um, virtual tours has been sort of the main um, the main focal point for uh, for the last twelve months, actually. So, um, but it's all within sort of trade world, consumer world. So, yeah, that's me. Hey, we're Andy and Zoe at Shed One Distillery. We started in 2016 in our garden shed, so everything was pretty much online from the beginning. And then we moved to the old calf shed in 2019, where we started Cumbria's first and only make your own gin experiences, tours, etc. So yeah, lockdown came and uh, we pivoted the word of the moment, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Never heard it before. Um, not in that context. So we've been doing uh, online talk, we've been doing online gin tastings, which have been going really well. Yeah. Hi there, uh, my name is Ben. I am the, um, one of the co-founders, um, owners and distiller at Puddingstone Distillery, uh, the home of Campfire Gin. We opened the doors back in 2016. Um, and we, like many other distilleries were um, hosting um, tours, tastings, masterclasses to um, augment the other day-to-day -day business. Um, and we've, we've had to switch everything online now, um, which has been interesting and actually a, a very good e evolution of the business. Hi, I'm Matt from uh, Six O'Clock Gym. I'm the Retail and Events Manager here in Bristol. Um, yeah, we started in 2010. Before lockdown, we had around 100 people a week coming into the distillery for in-person tours and tastings. But again, much like everybody else, unfortunately, we had to pivot into that virtual environment quite quickly and quite reactively when lockdown hit. And then again, when the second and third lockdown uh, came along as well. So it has been a very sort of reactive uh, what, 12 months for, for all of us. Thanks, everyone. Um, it kind of brings me on nicely to the first question, uh, which you have um, some of you have part answered already. Um, the initial question for me was what made you decide to put on virtual events? And I was really curious as to if any of you had been doing anything prior to lockdown or, or looking into that and if anybody had anything to say in that area? Um, well, for us, no, we were, we were very, we're quite a literal business um, and a, a lot of our stuff was more projection with the brand. So we, we'd have people at the farm and it was about 140 people a week and we were capped at that because it was specific, to, it's a working farm and a working distillery, which means it's only really without a huge amount of risk assessment to have people on site at certain times. So it's normally evenings and weekends are the only times you can have far, uh, people at the farm. And virtually, we hadn't really considered um, prior to uh, the wonderful global pandemic that erupted. <laughs> Just following on from Tom, actually, we, we used to, any time we sort of looked at virtual was through um, international. So mm. they were sort of opportunities where we would be like, oh, sort of 6 a.m. at the farm whilst Australia or uh, whatever their time difference was, would, would have been at the time. But we, we used to do that as sort of uh, training or brand initiatives or just to sort of say who we are, sm small snapshots, but that was the only type of virtual. And I'm sort of I'm not shy to sort of say, I never used the word to virtual um, before, before um, the global pandemic. I just sort of use interactive online, but it's been a heavily used word in the past 12 months, even from marketing, Google, Google searches. So 
yeah, we, as Tom said, we were just a literal business. Um, how about yourselves at Shed One? Um, because you're quite hands on, aren't you, um, with your distillery experience? Yeah, um, we well, we sort of have to be. It's, it's the two of us. Um, so yeah, we, we, I mean, we started. We'd had about three months of doing the uh, sort of in-house experiences, make your own gin, uh, gin tastings, um, which is quite a tour in there as well. Yeah. Uh, and then we shut down, and we thought, how do we, how do we continue to get, you know, a bit of interest out there, but also people enjoying our gins and spreading the word, and uh, a little bit of homework, a little bit of guesswork. And a little bit of right well we'll just do it and uh, it's proved very popular you know we limit the numbers yeah. to about a couple of dozen um so it keeps it at a more personal level yeah. uh, and we found a benefit with that because um people get to ask questions as we go through uh it's not just a, you're going to sit here drink our gin and listen to us it's more of an interactive um across the platform which we found people like we have yeah. i think because people know us for that when they come here and make their own gin they're doing it with us and they come here and have an afternoon g and t they know i've made it and they're, they're yeah. and we're there and we're showing them so it really has always been us with the face and we didn't want to move away from that mm. um so yeah a lot a lot of comments coming back from people about the kind of the intimate gin tastings that we do rather than getting a huge amount of people who then can't can't talk to each other so we do end up with, with groups of people who are friends yeah. And they're all having a giggle and we're having a giggle and it all ends up being very silly. But it, and, and it's and occasionally we all sing happy birthday to and someone. We sing happy so birthday. Yes, okay, we so that's, that's the way it goes. It's nice to have continued it virtually. Yeah. That's really lovely. And it kind of um it gets you thinking as well, because I guess one of the big challenges is translating that physical experience into a virtual one. Yeah. Um, to give that same sense of satisfaction, you know, to the people attending. Um I would like to look into sort of planning and equipment and how it must have taken quite a bit of thought to, to work that out and how to deliver, you know, a similar experience. Um, would anybody like to tell me a little bit about that? Um, the sort of work that goes into it, potentially costings of equipment, if anybody would be interested in doing that sort of thing themselves. I, I don't mind chipping in here to say that um, we, we weren't originally planning to do virtual events um, and it was actually driven by a by demand um, from from two two areas. One was um, the fact that we had um, a huge number of people waiting to come on their physical tour, as it were, um, and we needed to kind of work out what we did for those people. Did we, we did we offer them swapping tour vouchers for um, for, for gin, um, or, or just kind of postpone everything? And and we realised that we needed to give people another opportunity. The the other op the other reason was actually we had uh, a number of corporate inquiries. So suddenly there was these there were corporate organisations going that we've got all these staff. We need to do a training day, but we need to augment it with something else. Can you can you join us? So that really kick started what we were doing. Um, in terms of the equipment, um, we just started off as simply as we can. And I mean, I guess like the rest of you guys, you know, you find yourself just kind of filling little bottles or pouches with yeah. with lots of gin and you know. I think mean, we're still doing it that way. You know, we've got little measuring containers and I'm mixing up, you know, maybe 25 litres of martini in a go and then, and then pouring it into little 75 mil pouches and shipping it out. So logistically, it's, it's a big shift. It's quite time consuming. Um, you, you're, you're, you generally supply more material. Um, so if we're doing a, a, a tasting masterclass, um, it's going out with printed material, um, guidance notes, um, we've got packaging, um, we've got the containers, um, thousands of boxes. I mean, God, the place is full of cardboard now because um, <laughs> things stuff around. I think, we've, you know, we've probably used about four miles of brown paper tape as well, you know, just, just wrapping stuff up. Um, so, you know, it's the logistics side of it in terms of um, suddenly going from just sending out bottles and cases of gin to then doing this extra thing um, is, is, is quite it's quite time consuming and, and we've had to set aside a specific area and a specific time you know just to deal with that in the distillery so that it doesn't upset the rest of our day-to-day. -day. I loved what um, Shed One Distillery just said because uh, you sort of said you're learning as you go that was definitely our motto when we started um, last year in May it was very much 
look, this is, I mean, research, uh, even the research behind Zoom, um, it was something that was used a little bit maybe but my gosh sort of actually learning how to sort of spotlight videos um i mean we're on five acres of farm so and we wanted to show as much farm as possible that's our biggest marketing asset so we were trying we sort of drove down mid farm uh, sorry mid um mid tour but it was switching and being able to make sure that we were totally in control of the of the platform um so i mean Amazon was our best friend. Uh, I think it was the best way to trial it for trial and error, even in terms of mics, um, just making sure that we were being authentic. I mean, our mics were strapped to trials, um, so we're bringing in a bit of farm spirit in that way. Um, but it was massively trial and error. Uh, and where we are now versus how we were 12 months ago, um, I mean, in terms of confidence, is is skyrocketed. Uh, but with our actual assets, we've always kept it simple, but we have developed light rings are one of the best things that you can get for mm -hmm. sure. Um, good lighting and good sound control is definitely our sort of two, uh, two favorite areas. Yeah, I think it's round of applause to everyone that's been doing virtual tours because there was no playbook. You know, there was no, this is how you do a virtual tour because they weren't done, they weren't a thing. So. You know, craft distilling, craft distilling in the UK has been quite a pioneering uh, uh, thing to have gone through as an industry. You know, it, uh, 10 years ago, it wasn't a thing and it's now massive. I think a lot of people that are in it, they're a ha to have a go group of people that get out there and just make stuff happen, which is the exciting thing. And I think, as Charlotte said, it's an evolution. The first tour we did was basically you shouted! Because you didn't have microphones. <laughs> You know, and then, and then you were like, right, what went well, what went badly in that tour? Okay, sound was crap. And actually, connectivity was crap when we were over in this part of the farm because we tried to make it, there's, there's, there's sort of two different types of tour you can do, which is the more static tasting, or you can try and be a bit more dynamic with movement. And I think we probably pushed the barriers on. <laughs> you know, we'd be jumping in, switch spotlight camera to someone else, then jump in a vehicle and dash to the other side of the farm to look at the tentacles. <laughs> um, but you learn as you go and, you know, what, connectivity becomes a problem, right, we need to buy a dongle so that when we're here, we've got a little bit more connectivity, you know, and we need a microphone, but that looks crap, strap it to a trowel, as, as Charlotte said. And, you know, we even use the as well, we even used the rhubarb <laughs> stick uh, at one point as a microphone holder. You just get the microphone on a stick of rhubarb. So I think it's play with what you've got and be inventive, and that's what this industry craft is really great at doing. Um, and, and trial as you go. It is. It is that jumping in and getting on with it. I mean, that that's it. And I think a lot of us again within the craft industry. We've we've been playing by the you know, the seat of our pants ever since we started because things. If you don't just get on with it, then nothing mm. ever gets done. You know, if we'd actually yeah. waited to find the perfect cork for the bottles, because why don't people make corks who make bottles? You know, we, we would still be sitting here waiting to, yeah. to start the business. It's it's all of these things that I think within within the industry is that you you just get on with it, mm. and I think the public enjoys that as well because they kind of start feeling part of it as well. And they're yeah. part of. The, you know what you're doing and and how you're getting there so they'll they'll stick with you now if you're honest you know yeah. they'll go yep yeah, that's nice bit of rhubarb there lovely yeah. can't hear a word you're saying but isn't it a giggle yeah. <laughs> it's that. yeah it's the spirit of the thing they go along with it and it's yeah. good and i think the, the one the real shame about the pandemic the big guys have an absolute birthday uh, craft has been hit really badly because mm. we, we are disproportionately exposed to the on trade compared yeah. to the big lads. We're blessed because actually we've got a bit of off-trade stuff going on, but we're still, 50% of our business is the on-trade. Uh, and there are, you know, within craft, there are some businesses that are up to sort of 90, 95% exposed. So yeah. doing this virtual thing, connecting with the consumer, you have to, you, you've just got to do it. Otherwise, and, and uh, I mean, just touching on, and I'm sorry, I feel like I'm hogging, but touching on a few of the things that the guys have said, that transition to physical and virtual, it, we've all undercharged for this service because the reality is, you know, what Ben was saying in terms of he's filling pouches with Martin, that's a massive amount of labour. He's not factoring in his time into the yeah. costing model there. You know, everyone within the craft industry have pulled themselves inside out to deliver this kind of thing. 
and they've probably done it for less than break even in reality. Mm -hmm. um, that's, and that's the, the really hard thing about the last 12 months. Um, but hats off to everyone because it's, you know, we're, everyone's fighting for survival in this sort of environment is the reality. Yeah. That, that, that's something that Tom was saying there um, was that actually one of the advantages that I think we all have um, over the larger producers is that we all have a potentially stronger, more direct engagement with our locality. Um, and it might be a, a smaller customer base, but what this has allowed us to do is yes, we might have, we might kind of do an event for 40 people that are within a, a 15 mile radius, but they invite friends and family who are nationwide. And I think never before have, have distillers of our scale had the opportunity to, to, to reach directly into the houses of consumers um, and engage with them because People aren't going to drive from the Hebrides down to our distillery for a night's tour, but <laughs> they are going to join us from their sofa. Yeah. You know, um, yeah, and I think it's been the power that, that we've got as, as small producers and as, as small distillers, as opposed to necessarily brand owners as well. Um, yeah. we, can, we can show that we, we make it. I think one of the really important things that came out of lockdown for all of us is also the fact that people are really driven to shop local at the moment and they're really trying to support local businesses as much as they possibly can. And we've definitely found, as, as you just mentioned, people who are local, who already know the brand, who are already in touch with it and in tune with it, definitely were interested in, in this virtual tour. But then it was a great way for them to connect with friends and family across the country. They could also invite them along. And it was kind of a really nice, almost like little home lock-in, um, home lockdown lock-in for them to kind of come and, come and see each other and actually spend some time together and socialise, but also spread the word of the brand as well. You, you actually get people that have like had that done their hair, you know, because <laughs> they're going on a virtual gym tasting. It's amazing how you know what what a Saturday night out now is. And, uh... We we had a lovely we had one lovely couple, and uh, they called us the following week, and we chatted, and he's. And she was telling us about how lovely it was. And he was in the background. He said, I cleaned my shoes. <laughs> <laughs> and he put a clean shirt on. Yeah. He you know, brushed his hair and he cleaned, even cleaned his shoes. And I said, well, if you come back again, I want to see your shoes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but it is that. It yeah. is that. And, and we have been asked, you know, are you going to continue doing this after lockdown? Because we have really enjoyed it. Yeah. And as you're saying, you know, about people can't come all the way to see us sometimes. So they mm -hmm. have found that they can do it yeah. this way and we can get stuff out to them. So we, we are yeah, looking it's, it's into a, it's just... it's a fix, you know, I think. Yeah, it's going to have to continue, I think. Yeah. On that, we're, we're definitely looking at, uh, at continuing. We've, we've got a problem, our, our tour facility with a COVID lens on it and, he, and with a social distancing lens on it, which is going to be in place for the rest of the year minimum. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually going to be difficult for us to open tours up at the farm without really changing the facility, which we haven't quite got the minerals or the time to do at the moment. So I don't see us opening up big time on physical tours, potentially until the fourth quarter of this year, potentially. We're still trying to work it all out. We might have to do something externally in August. We're thinking about doing a solid month on, but it's going to be difficult to actually physically reopen tours. And it's only going to be a few facilities that are going to be able to do that with the social distancing laws that are, are going to be in place. I also think we've leaned onto that and we've actually got, I know uh, with consumer virtual tours, you sort of book in advance so they can book up online, et cetera. But from an actual corporate, um, as in sort of B, uh, B2B, we've actually got bookings. So confirmed even post roadmap dates, um, were issued we've actually got bookings uh until june so they know and I, I think from a corporate perspective they actually love it, it we're sort of being used as um oh various different sort of team get togethers or incentives or there's actually um businesses selling on as sort of a byproduct but having a gin in between so it's not as full-on but I think companies uh, large corporate companies are actually finding it so much more beneficial because they don't have to go and schmooze and go out and invite them out the cost associated with that to go out for a London restaurant all of that sort of stuff they're able to network online 
whilst in the comfort of their own home. So I think there's been such a big appetite for that, that, yeah, we've actually got bookings until June. And as I said, that was, they those bookings have come in after the roadmap, which I just, I think, personally shows that the appetite for virtual will continue for mm. the foreseeable. Um, so, you know, there, there are a few questions here and you guys are having a great conversation. So you've kind of part answered some of them. So, um, I mean, one of the ones I did want to ask was, um, what can you do virtually that you can't do physically? What are the benefits? And I know you guys have touched on that with um, accessibility um, and people being able to attend these things that maybe not so easy to attend. Have you found any other sort of little quirks or things you can do with customers that you maybe couldn't do physically? We can, we can certainly get a better insight into um, the affluence of our customers. Because uh, you can check out the great <laughs> kitchen, that's for sure. <laughs> 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 yeah. um, Everybody's um, going to have those backgrounds now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can also do, I mean, the, the, the one thing that, that actually we, we never really did when we had people into the distillery was we didn't poll people. So, so now you can, you can do a whole series of polls, you know, you know, what was your favourite drink, blah, blah, blah. You can, you can get some incredible research and, and you can format it in a way that's, that's fun and interactive. Um, mm -hmm. And that's, that's stuff that you would have never actually done within the, the distillery environment because inevitably with the virtual things, sometimes you can have a little bit of a pause. Um, and um, so, so feedback is, is one of the things that, that we're discovering is, is, is really, really good. And just that referral, the, ref the referral from th throughout families and then friends. And, you know, you might have one person that you're doing a tour for in a street and then suddenly the whole street wants to do an event because, you know, they can't do their annual street party. So they'll do a tour instead, a virtual one. So that's yeah. something that we, we get online that we wouldn't have had um, if we, we'd, we'd had people on site. Yeah, I think that, like you say, the corporate and business to business, we've had multiple businesses come back to us uh, to do tours and tastings multiple times. Again, I think, it, you know, like you say, it's that it's a lot easier to kind of coordinate. It's a lot cheaper as well than actually going to a physical location. Um, and it's also the fact people can get there. If somebody can't join on that one night, they know in a month's time, oh, we can get this other office or this other group of people from the same business together. They can come and try it again. But um, yeah, we've had some companies two, three times, um, you know, on what well, is effectively the same sort of experience, but they just enjoyed it so much and really wanted to connect again. It, they, I suppose, were almost using it as their own virtual pub, um, yeah. which is, you know, a great thing. I think it's just the exposure from our side of things. I mean, February alone, we had over 2,500 people join for a virtual um, for a virtual tour of some scale, even if that's a, an awards do or uh, a corporate tour or a virtual, but it's exposure for us. Uh, a, you don't have a limit on the amount. I mean, yeah, you have a Zoom limit, um, but you don't have the limit to of how many people can come in at once. So where we were sort of restricted with physical numbers before, just because of, um, of our facility, we're able to, uh, to expand that and really make a show out of it. It's worth saying February was a very strong month. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> you don't get that every month. But the, the other thing, to, I think you can show stuff that you couldn't show physically. Um, so we've, we've been able to, within a tour, start a destination um, on, on a smaller still, sort of show the loading of it, et cetera, which you really potentially, and I'm talking like a 50 litre still here, you wouldn't want to be doing that with a load of people in the room just for health and safety reasons, et cetera. So we can do that safely, show a still being filled, uh, and then dash off, do other stuff. During the summer, we can show Johnny in the beehives talking about the bees and what the bees do on the farm and, and honey, which, again, without, you probably could only do a maximum of two or three people in the apiary. They'd have to put a bee suit on. But, and that's a bit of a weird one when talking about a distillery, but it's something that we wouldn't have been able to do physically or, or particularly easily logistically in the time period. But you can give people these snapshots of sort of the more high risk activities that go on at, uh, at, our, at the distillery. And then by the end of the, uh, the, the tour, we can go back to the still and, you know, we've got, we've got spirit coming off and you can show, I mean, we all know that distilling, it's like watching a kettle boil in reality. It's not really a spectator sport, is it? But <laughs> it, does, it brings it to life a, a bit more for people. Um, so there are elements that you could do and we can cover more ground 
using Zoom um, and uh, and focusing, you know, switching between different protagonists on Zoom, you can cover a greater surface area that you wouldn't cover with a group of people as well. So they're sort of the the the, the, the plus points for me. And you can you can do it to people on the other side of the planet. Um, another thing I, I wanted to look at and, and think about with you guys is, is the revenue side of it, because obviously a lot of this started with, with keeping the revenue coming in during lockdown. Um, obviously, as you guys have touched on, it does cost more to do um, and maybe has been slightly undersold. Do you guys, have you found that it's been a, a substantial part of revenue to keep things moving or has it worked more to keep in touch with customers and grow the customer base? I think for us, definitely, it's been more uh, customer base. It's definitely been a way of, as we've said before, spreading the word, uh, a great marketing tool and keeping in touch with customers as well. Um, yeah, those people who, you know, are sort of regular buyers from us um, have seen that we've been offering virtual tours. They can't come to the distillery in person, so they've bought it instantly, shared it with all of their friends. So it really has just been a way of communicating about the brand and getting the, the product into customers' hands, basically. Yeah, we, as we said before, we haven't, we've, we've been keeping ours small. So the revenue side, there's only so much we can actually get in. Um, and I still, we still haven't sorted out labels. So the week before, <laughs> I'm still literally cutting our labels down to size to fit the small bottles. And I don't want to do that with 400 people. <laughs> so <laughs> I didn't think it would go on this long. No. I weren't really sure. Uh. It was going to go on this long, but we always get kept forgetting to ask the printer to sort it out. We still will one of these days. Mm. But I think so revenue side of it, it yeah, it's not a it's not a huge amount of money. It's not a lot. Every little helps because mm. as we've also said, we've lost it out on so much this year. And I think gradually ourselves we're just actually just still being here because yeah. we know that there are so many companies that, that really haven't survived at all. Um, so revenue, no. But it definitely has helped um, keep our name out there and push the name further. Mm. Like we were mentioning about happy birthdays and things. Um, one, one, uh, of the t one of the tastings, we had a couple. And then the following month, there were 11 members of their family and them again, um, all there. And some of them knew us, some of them had never heard of us, and they were scattered all around the country. So they brought them in. Yeah. And um, and that's what we've continued to do. So to say, financially, not the bestest thing. However, it, it's definitely worth doing it. Um, yeah, keep the name out there, spread the word around the country. As as you know, it's been mentioned, you don't get people popping down from the Hebrides to Cumbria just to have a, an hour in a distillery. So yeah, it's a great tool that way. But yeah. you know, there's a price in time and cost. But it's it's outweighed by the uh, hopefully outweighed by the impact it has on the business and getting the name out there. And and I think can I also say for us, we 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 love our business and we love having people in the shed. And we'd only been open the actual public yeah. side of the shed had only been open for a few months before we had to close it all down. And uh, it's it, it kind of feels a bit like a ghost town. And being able to be in the shed and have people virtually with you, but you've got your stills behind you and you're showing the botanicals and you're drinking gin. It's every single one has given us a massive lift yeah. and made us think, oh yeah, you know, remember why we do this. Remember this, this is one of the big reasons why we started this. And uh, so yeah, every single time afterwards, we can, it, it gives us, I think, a much needed emotional yeah, it gives you a boost. boost. Yeah. There is definitely a post post tour virtual tour uh, adrenaline rush. Yeah. There's always you, yeah. As soon as you sort of end it for all, there is definitely that uh, that buzzing feeling. Yeah, for sure. I just want to collapse. To be quite honest, <laughs> <laughs> I kind of, I find them actually quite quite draining. <laughs> Moving into a, I, you know, we we've all gone from being like tinkering distillers to to have to take on the role of <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, you know, and, and, and remember your your script or or and now i mean now it's just kind of ad-libbed I, I i i i'm really worried about the day when we get people back in the distillery because we have a set kind of program and i'm going to completely forget what I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's going to be a tricky thing um 
Now going back to the cost, um, I think it's probably all fair to say that actually, if you get people onto site and you get a few drinks down them, it's a lot easier to sell some bottles of gin at the end of the evening. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, where, that's where part of the bonus is. Uh, and that's a little bit more difficult online. And I know, Bernard, that you've got a kind of question about how we might incentivize people to, um, to, to spend a little bit more. Um, so um, do you yeah. think on that now about how we do it? Or? Yeah, no, that's, that's fine. Touch on it now, because I was going to say about the, um, I know with the Warner's Distillery Tour, which I've been on there, you get a code at the end to get a discount because you've been on the tour. And that's a great incentive once you've had a couple to buy you know, some booze. And it would be nice to look at, you know, what else you guys are doing and if you found any of that helpful. So I, I just, just jump in then quickly and just say that we, we do exactly the same thing. So we've we've, we've started offering um, codes at the, at the end of the event. And um, those are discount codes on product. Um, but we've actually started to introduce and include those with the cocktail masterclasses as well. Um, so that, that covers off everything. So it's not only the, the, the gins, it's everything else that you might need um, to, to then continue your, your home cocktail making experience. And that's, that's liquid ingredients and um, accessories as well. Um, and we've actually found that the uptake on that is, is, is really good. Um, that's, that's worked really, really well for us. Um, and when we've tied it in with charitable um, events as well, then that's, that seems to have, you know, that seems to have had even more effect. So that's, uh, that's, that's what we've done. It's, it's, we realized that we would never always be able to kind of reach those level of post event sales, um, that we would get for a, a in, in flesh event. Um, and, and that really wasn't the driver for doing them, but, um, you know, we need to make some money as well at the end of the day um, and, and keep it going. I think there's a really interesting sort of consumer dynamic with a virtual tour. I think it's a physical tour. You go into a distillery and I think, as we said, once I've had a couple of sherries, then, then also they've got a higher, higher chance or probability that they're going to buy a bottle as well. And, and uh, I think with a, with a virtual tour, I think it's a different mindset that you're, you're, you, you know, you're paying for a piece of entertainment in, in an evening. Um, mm -hmm. And it, I think it's a slightly different mindset that the consumer's in when they're attending a virtual tour versus a physical tour. There's almost, a, if you go into a distillery, you're nuts if you don't come away with a bottle. Do you know what I mean? You're at the source. <laughs> so I think, I think there is a little bit of a different, and I've got no way of quantifying, and there's probably very clever retail people that could tell us what that is. But I think it's a different mind state for the consumer, which I think it's slightly harder or a lot harder to get them over the line into purchasing a bottle um, is, a, is, a, is a reality. But I, I just, um, on, the, on the, 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 the one thing about the tours that all of us, we've all started these businesses and it's everyone's pride and joy. It's the guys at the shed just said, you, you, it's just criminal that these facilities of joy are sat empty at the moment without people coming into. Do you know what I mean? These, we've all blood, sweat and tears created these spaces uh, yeah. and our, our own little sort of altar to perfection of, of liquid. Um, and uh, there's nothing more joyous than bringing people in and showing it. And it's almost a consolation at the moment is doing it this way. It's the only way we can do it. And uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, it's criminal. And the sooner we can get people into them all, the better. Uh, I think. Yeah. I think leading off to uh, leading off Tom's point, um, it's just saying about the whole sort of getting people to purchase a bottle after. So we um, we we actually introduced it from a data perspective. I know that it's what you said before, um, Ben, on it, which is really interesting because to actually quantify. Um, sort of tours leading to bottle sales for a virtual world was um, like the redemption rate was super interesting for us to sort of have an average on. But I do agree that after you finished a virtual a virtual tour, it, it, it sort of ends. So you press end. You normally shut your laptop or your phone or you put it away because you've just watched for an hour. Whereas when you were at a physical tour, I mean, majority of people actually exit past the uh, the gin shop or whatever you want to call it, mm. if you're the bar that's selling. So to be able to physically take something away and be like, well, this was it. Whereas they've got that in front of them as their packs. Whereas the, you're not taking away the samples or your nosing glasses before. You're now taking, a, you've got your, um, 
your bundle, which as a whole is a whole different way of how to make it pretty and people compliment that. And it's, I think that's what's really mad. Whereas before they'd leave with a bottle and that was their away present. Whereas they've already got their present from the from the virtual experience. So we actually started um, doing the redemption just as a way to introduce reviews. When we started, um, when we started launching our events, at our virtual events, um, we wanted feedback in order for people, I mean, everyone lives by reviews these days. Um, you can't do anything without sort of looking at the star rating and what people have said. So we actually um, did it as, an, as sort of an incentive tool to get people to, to book onto, for example, if you leave us a review, good or bad, totally just, we didn't sort of uh, persuade it, but then you get X amount of discount on a bottle online. Um, and then we've obviously got customer data, et cetera. So we actually introduced that as a way to grow our feedback and our, and our review, port, um, review on our portal, which did tend to work. Um, I mean, the frustrating thing is you often get emails talking about um, being personal is that you get emails where you get the phone calls from like the couple that you said who thank you. And you're like, oh, can you just put that in writing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. It feels so bad. But you're like, well, lovely comments, but can you just write that down? Um, <laughs> but someone else can see them. <laughs> oh, I had to get in touch with you. Look, get in touch with me on some huge pop. <laughs> we removed that now where we just we do we do do a redemption code after but um yeah it, it started to just sort of fade out everyone was had four gins in them by then so they just wanted to go and continue the party at home on their own so um, yeah it's a difficult one um that's fantastic um i'm kind of running out of questions um <laughs> So I think what I'd like to do, it's been a really fantastic conversation, um, and I think that it's going to be really interesting for the people that are watching it. Um, it's like we said, it is pioneering. It is a new thing. There's no rule book. Um, you guys have done a great job at sussing it out. Um, if I could maybe take some closing comments from each of you. Um, maybe as well, I know we've touched on if it's worth continuing to do so. It certainly seems to be worth continuing from a marketing point of view. Um, but yeah, just a few closing points for each person, and if, if you think it's worth continuing with. Um, if we start off with you, Tom. Um, yeah, I think if you haven't done it, get after it. Um, be prepared to fail, because it's, you, you know, it's never going to be perfection, and you learn through failure, and that's what we did. So failure doesn't mean disaster, but disasters will happen, and we've had them uh, live on camera, and that's the other thing. It is live, but you just got to march through it, haven't you? And I think uh, it, at a time like this, the one unique thing that we've all got as craft distillers uh, are our facilities and our, our human stories. That's the difference between us and the big lads. Um, so uh, get out there and do it and work out what your thing is that makes your tour different. If you can just add something that it isn't just a gin tasting, if you can add something that just makes it bespoke to your facility or your particular style of gin or whatever you're doing, then, then add your layer over the top and always always strive for excellence as well because the better we make these the more the consumer will want to come on different ones so don't ever try and do average don't just do it for going through the motions if you're going to do that don't do it although i did get marked down for swearing the other day uh, one of the tours it's the only four star review on the tour the rest are five um, uh, 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 it's a sign of honesty i like to say swearing make it, make it great you know, um, d d was it, what does Sean Connery say in The Rock? Well, that's got swearing in it, but, uh, you know, make it great, make it enjoyable. It's And remember, it's not just about the liquid. You are providing entertainment for these people as well. So that's the, that's the other thing. You've got to make it a joyous experience for, for them. And the more we do it and the more excellent everybody makes it, the more people will book onto it. And it'll be this great little industry for, for craft because... The big guys cannot do what we can do. And that's what I would say. Um, yeah, so when in doubt, uh, humour. Humour is the best form. Just show some personality by adding the different types of personalities that you've got within the team, or even if it's small, just humour has been the best way of normalising situations. So if the sig if signal went down, sound uh, had an issue, Make a joke. Every everyone's human. They respond better to it. Don't be serious. Um, 
leading off what uh, actually Tom said with it, USP is 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 definitely the way forward. So why are you running that tour at that time? Uh, for example, is it looking around Mother's Day? Um, how can you then sort of think about how they would enjoy it? Sort of by being em uh, empathetic and putting yourself in someone else's shoes, what do they actually want? You know that they want a couple of drinks, you want a bit of a giggle, and they want to be able to see their mum, family, friends, whatever. So just don't overthink it. Um, go with it. Trial and error has definitely been our sort of uh, the way that we've dealt with it over the last uh, last few months. And then if it works, just roll with it. <laughs> just keep going. And it's what Matt said earlier with the corporate stuff, the repeat customers that you get. And yes, you don't actually change the, the content of the tour or what they're receiving. Just just go with it. So um yeah, we, we definitely will be continuing with the uh, the virtual world. Uh, just maybe not using the word virtual as much. Probably going to go down interactive or online because I think people are just starting to feel a bit sick with the word virtual, we included. So uh, unless I get a tattoo of it or something. Um, so yeah, interactive online, but we will be uh, we will be pushing it forward. So humour is my main my main one for that. Strong advice there. Yeah. Um, what's else, sorry, Andy. Uh, well, I'd go along with that. Um, be honest, be yourselves. Uh, Humour is always the best medicine. Things will go wrong uh, and accept that. You know, if you fall off your stool while you're trying to show something, climb back on screen and go, as I was saying, you know, just let them know that it is interactive. You know, it is a virtual, it's a virtual. We prefer online, it definitely, because it's not virtual, we're real. You know, you're not you've got a headset on in a computer room. That's it. The gym's real, we're real. Uh, this is the way you can connect with us now and hopefully you'll enjoy it and then you'll come and see us when we can all get out there and uh, do this in person. But I agree, it is going to be something that will continue and the better we are at it, the more people will want it and, you know, the whole business will be greater than the sum of its parts as the best things are. Because if we're all on the top of our game, people will expect that, they'll like it and they'll keep coming back and I think that's the key to it. And I, and I think also, as you say, the whole, the whole USP, every single one of us does it differently. So people could go on 15 different gin mm. tastings throughout a year and they would get hopefully a completely different experience because even the few of us here today, we're doing completely different things. It just mm. happens to be we have gin is the center of it, yeah. but the way that we do it, the way we put it across and, and why we're doing it, 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 everyone's different. So it's lovely to be able to do that. I don't know, maybe we should all start doing some sort of joined up interactive gin <laughs> tastings yeah <laughs> just flash through the head yeah. yeah i think maybe that's that's might be the next way to go so mm. watch the oh, ships yeah stronger yeah. together i really yeah. really um, like that idea yeah yeah and that there will be lots of cue for humor in that as well because there's oh, no. a lot of <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's really complicate our lives <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remember the phrase, back to you in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> and Bernie, you could perhaps be um, the person in charge of it all. Yeah, yeah well, fingers crossed, it seems to have gone okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, and yourself, Ben? Um, well, it was an interesting point that was made there about doing it with other distillers because um, we actually kind of, I mean, first of all, yeah, have fun with it. Um, and, and, and also, don't be afraid to step back and let somebody do the presentation. If, if they know the product, they know the brand, and they, they're a natural presenter, let them do it. You don't have to stand up there in, in a role that you're, you're fearful of, because that will come across on the, on the camera. So um, and the people are in front of you in your distillery as well. Um, I think that's, that's really, really important. Um, and innovation. Um, yes, you can stand there and you can talk about your product or you can talk about how to make a cocktail, but um, if you start to collaborate and bring other people in, then it can get really exciting. And we've, we've worked with um, bitters producers. We did, we did an event with a magician. I mean, that, that was, that was <laughs> you know, and it was, it was probably one of the best ones we've done. Um, and I've, I've sat on tours where, you know, they've, they've brought in all other um, different characters. So you've had a bit of music in between and just so that, you know, while people are racing down their fourth martini, you know, <laughs> switch off and listen to engage with something else. So I think just that idea of uh, kind of growing it beyond the the experience with the, the, the distiller and 
on the distillery environment can, can sometimes be really, really helpful um, and make the whole event more engaging. It can increase the reach as well, naturally, as well, because uh, you've got another party involved. So um, and innovation has to, be the, has to be the key there as well, um, especially when you've got, as we seem to have, um, quite a, a decent percentage of return visitors who are coming back because they want to see what you do with, you know, Christmas cocktails as opposed to martinis or Negronis or bitters. Um, so you've always got to kind of refresh the format a little bit. And, um, and uh, that's good for, that's good for the, for, for us as, as, as presenters as well, because if we get tired of doing the same thing over and over again, that will come across on camp. Um, you know, so many times you can, you can go, and here's how we make a gin and tonic. <laughs> so, um, so I think innovation and keeping it fresh is, is, is really, really important. Yourself, Matthew, finally. Yeah, I think uh, like we've, we've touched on being reactive, being adaptive and being able to change and kind of, you know, react to what your audience is saying, what they want to see and what the current situation is, uh, is really, really important. We definitely do want to keep doing online tours. Uh, I'll shy away from the word virtual there um, <laughs> and, you know, make these interactive experiences as fun as possible for everyone. And yeah, some kind of collaboration could be absolutely fantastic between multiple distillers showing you different locations, how different gins and different spirits are produced. Um, you know, it kind of opens up that world to so much more. We um, sort of when we kind of launched our tours to the public, partnered up with uh, Double Dutch Mixers just to offer something a little bit different to people. Uh, and again, to kind of leverage uh, their following and their audience to bring them on board with us as well. And it worked fantastically. Um, I think doing something where you could have a mixture of, sort of gins, of cocktails, of, as I say, different spirits. If it was a gin distiller with a whiskey distiller, with a, a vodka distiller, it could be absolutely fantastic. There's again, a lot of humor and a lot of fun to be had there. Um, and I think it would just be sort of, you'd get a lot of people involved in it because they just want that experience. They'd want to share that time with friends, with family, and actually feel like they are in a, a pub in that kind of environment that they were used to before the world turned into what it is today. Oh, thank you so much, guys. Um, I was really excited about putting this on because it's, it's new and it's interesting. And I was selfishly, I wanted to find out what everybody's been doing and how it's been working. And it's been a really magic talk. Thank you. Um, really amazing ideas and lovely flow. And I love the way you've all talked to each other and collaboration. Um, so thank you so much for taking time to speak to us today. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Goodbye. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Thanks. Yeah. Well, you all. Take care.